Jackson Katz is joining us. He is an educator, a filmmaker, and also author of the forthcoming book, Leading Men, Presidential Campaigns, and the Cultural Politics of Manhood. Uh, Jackson, it's great to talk to you. Um, I, wanna, I have a bunch of questions for you, but before we get into that, just to kind of, because this is really a, a, a field you are, I consider you an expert in, give me your thoughts on how you're, you're seeing this so-called war on women that now has become a very popular topic of discussion as a result of contraception and health care pr proposed and actual bills coming particularly from Republican politicians. Well, I think what we see happening is all over the country in state legislatures, as well as national level, um, radical right uh, wing uh, people have been elected to public office and are trying to en enact a, uh, an agenda, a radically sort of anti-woman, if you will, or women's rights agenda. Um, this, this, these elements have been around in American politics for obviously for a long time, but because, they, because of the success of the Tea Party, because of some of the electoral success, at the state uh, legislative level, um, we're seeing we're seeing this come full force, and obviously the Rick Santorum campaign in the Republican primaries has given a national platform to what, again, has been an ongoing effort by elements of the of the far right to roll back the progress that the women's movement uh, and the gay and lesbian movements have uh, have uh, you know enjoyed and propelled over the last uh, several decades. I'm curious your thought about why we just talked yesterday about a new poll that suggests among Republican women, Rick Santorum seems to be the most the, the most preferred candidate. Uh, we also heard from South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley just I, th I believe it was on the View yesterday. We spoke about it earlier, saying that women don't care about contraception. That's a quote. And then when pressed on that by Joy Behar, she kind of backed off of it a little bit. It almost seems like. Not so. It, it makes sense that Republican men would kind of want to pursue this this uh, this logic, but even women seem to be both buying into it and even furthering it. In the case of Nikki Haley, against their own best interests, how are we seeing this happening? Well, I, I mean, some of it's the politics uh, of of being a Republican uh, woman trying to either uh, win a political office or, or or stay in political office. It's they're playing to the uh, you know, if you will, to the base, and I think I think the talking point for the Republican Party these days is to try to shift away from this discussion about women, about contraception, about the Republicans' retrograde attitudes towards women, because they know electorally they're going to have a big problem in the general campaign in the fall. And so, a lot of what's been happening in the in the public discussion has been about the uh, the the, uh, the Republican primaries, and they're playing to the the most radical elements in the Republican base. Um, but now more savvy politicians are realizing this is not a, a winning political strategy for the general election, so they're trying to mute it. So people who are public figures, public uh, Republican women office holders, uh, they're doing their uh, part to try to shift attention away from this, this conversation uh, because it's not a political winner for them. Well, the interesting thing is we've seen a couple of kind of strategies come forward over the last six or so months in response to some of these policies, one of which has been specifically with Planned Parenthood, the kind of proposal or, or motivation to boycott organizations that themselves are removing funding from Planned Parenthood. I, I guess we could kind of debate how effective that's been, but from your point of view, what's really the most effective thing that those who understand the importance of women's rights and the attempts to kind of uh, uh, erode those rights, what's the, what's the best thing that can be done to push back against that, uh, that effort? Well, I think I mean I think we need explicit uh, activism and leadership, uh, both from uh, elected officials on the, on the you know Democratic Party and the progressive wing of the Democratic Party, and but also everywhere. I think I think the hope is that a lot of people have, on the on the left and or, and progressives and feminists hope that the Republicans have overplayed their their uh, hand in this regard. But that but what that what that requires is is that there are going to be so many women and men who are outraged by this attempt to. Uh, uh, you know, to roll back women's basic uh, rights. Uh, uh, that 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 electorally in the fall, it'll 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 um, uh, you know there'll be a there'll be a, a progressive backlash against that. But one thing that might be interesting, uh, David, is uh, about Rick Santorum's popularity with certain right wing women. So let's let's not say he's popular with women. He's certain he's popular with a certain wing of the evangelical base of the Republican Party. Right. And that's important, but it's not, it's not the same as saying he's popular with women. 
And I've obviously, and a lot of other people have been very interested in, in this phenomenon. Why are women attracted to a candidate that some of us see as um, being incredibly um, anti-woman the way that we see it? But that's, it's not really fair to say that because women aren't a unified voting bloc or have unified interests. That's one thing I think we've learned over the past several decades. There is not this homogenous category of women that have a certain um, agenda. There's a, there's, it's, a, it's complicated. You know, there, there are different uh, interests within the category of, of women, as, as there are different interests among the category of, of men. And one um, strain of sort of feminist theory and, and discussion about uh, Rick Santorum's popularity with some of those evangelical women is that one thing that Rick Santorum does is he talks emotionally about, uh, about birth, about child, uh, uh, you know, about having children, about, you know, he, he and his wife who lost one of their... Uh, you know, she she uh, had a, a I think some form of stillbirth, right? And um, they brought the fetus home and she introduced it to the kids, right. and it was discussed in parts of the mainstream media as this ghoulish act. But I think that was not a right. That was not fair. It wasn't, and it was it was certainly not emotionally. Um, uh, uh, tap into where lots of people are around some of these issues. And what, what some, of the, some of the feminist theory that I've been reading suggests is that actually Rick Santorum is tapping into a lot of women's grief around reproductive failures or, or uh, tragedies that, that have happened in their lives. Or, or, you know, there's lots of women who have miscarriages, lots of women who have had fertility problems. And Rick Santorum, as a man, publicly validates their experience of, of loss and of grief in a way, this is identity politics. See, it's not about the, it's not about his stance on certain policies. It's that he, as a public figure and as a man, is giving voice to their experience on an emotional level, on a relational level, on a family level. And some of us are are astounded that people could make choices about who to vote politically based on based on whether somebody can talk in a way that resonates with somebody's personal experience. But that's how millions of people vote. Right. So in a sense, what you're saying, Jackson, is that he's gone above and beyond the fact that a lot of the policies he has and would support are actually anti-woman. He's been able to transcend that in a way by identifying or at least allowing women to identify with an experience he has. It's almost like he's gone up to the next tier. Uh, yes. And, 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 and the women who support him would not would not at all interpret his beliefs as anti-woman. They would, he would, he would, they, they would say that he's actually pro-woman and that the anti-women people are the ones who don't, uh, you know, recognize and acknowledge women's uh, central role as mother. I mean, it's a, fa it's a false criticism. I think it's an unfair criticism of feminists and feminism that they don't, that feminism or feminists don't acknowledge women's motherhood or, or celebrate motherhood. That's a, that's a completely false charge, but it's, it, it's been a popular piece of propaganda for the past 40 years that feminists don't care about mothers and motherhood and issues relating to that. And, and so it, it, it taps, Santorum taps into that trope. When, when Sarah Palin was the vice presidential candidate for the Republican Party and it came out that she and her husband had a Down syndrome child, um, all this, there was all this talk in the Republican uh, sort of base and, and in, the, in the media that they were somehow... that. That, that Sarah Palin would somehow be a friend to people with children with disabilities, that all of a sudden, oh, we have somebody who knows and cares about us, who can, who can relate to our issues, people who have children with disabilities. And yet, was that discussion about policy? Was it, dis was it, was it a discussion about what policies Sarah Palin would pursue or support politically that would help people with ch children with disabilities? Or was it just that she would understand us? And I think some of what's going on is in American politics, the, the, the Republicans figured out long ago that it's not about policy. It's really millions of voters vote on based on I identity or identification on on the person you you most you feel most comfortable with or who thinks who you think understands you. All of that stuff is not about uh, it's it's not about uh, you know, policy understanding. It's about uh, personal connection. Absolutely. Jackson, as always, I wish we had more time. We've been speaking with Jackson Katz, educator, filmmaker. He's author of the forthcoming book, Presidential Campa uh, Leading Men, Presidential Campaigns and the Cultural Politics of Manhood. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to the book, Jackson, and a pleasure as always to talk to you. Thanks, Dave.